Hello guys, welcome back to this channel. Today we're gonna to talk about frames, how to create a frame in Java. There are two ways to make a program, a Java program create a frame. The first way is to declare an object of type JFrame, instantiate that object, and then use various methods to manipulate the attributes of that frame. I will say JFrame, I'll call it frame, new jframe so i need to import the jframe class that's it so now let us manipulate the attributes of the frame the first one is gonna be how we can set a title to this frame so there are two ways to do that the first way is to directly pass a string here in our jframe constructor so i will say frame title so this is actually going to be the title of our frame there's another way we can do that instead of passing the string directly in the constructor we can use a method called set title so we will say frame that's the name of a jframe instance that set text and then in the bracket we can pass in the title so set title here and in the brackets we can pass the title so that will be frame title another method useful method is the set size so set size method is used to define the size of your frame so you're gonna define the width and then the height of the so we will say frame that set size and we will write the width 800 and the height 600. So if we run this program, you know, nothing will show because in Java GUI, there is a very important method that we need to always put if we want our frame to be visible. So that method is called set visible. So how do you do that? We say frame that set visible and then we pass in the Boolean value true here so that means that now our frame is going to be visible whenever we run the program so when i run now you can see the frame showing so as you can notice the set visible method by default is set to false so if i say false here and run the program is going to run but the frame will not be visible so that's basically what this means and if i remove this line of code let me comment it like this. The frame will still not show because the default set visible is set to false. All right, so for our example, we will set this to true and that's going to be visible. Or notice that when you run, you can see that your frame is showing on the left side of your screen, top left side of the screen. And what we want to do is that we want to make sure that the frame appears at the center of our screen. So there's a particular method to do that. That's called the set location relative to. So I will say frame that set location relative and I will say no. So this line of code is going to make sure that our frame appears at the center of the screen. So now when you run, you can see that by default, the frame is appearing at the center of the screen. And note that we can also resize. Once the frame has appeared, we can resize by stretching our frame. So what if we want to make sure that our frame is not resizable? There's a method to do that. And that method is called set resizable. So we will say a frame that set resizable and we will say false here so now when i run if i try to resize the frame i'm not able to do that because we set resizable false here one other thing we can define is called the set default close operation so this method will allow us to determine the action to be taken when the user clicks on the Windows closing button. Let me show you that button. See here we have the Windows frames closing button. So when the user clicks on it, we can define various types of operations that should happen. So how do we do that? So we will say frame that set default close operation, and then we say J frame that exit on close so that means that when you click on the exit button closing button we will exit the frame all right so there are various actions that we can actually use we have the exit on close as we've seen that we have the do nothing on close we have the dispose on close we have the hide on close you know these are all window constants here 
So when you click, you type that here, you have these options down here. So you can choose from the list here and uh, based on the needs of your program. But as for this example, we are gonna be using the exit underscore on underscore close. All right, so that's it for the set default close operation. One other thing that we can do is to actually change the icon of the frame. You can see here at the top here, the title bar, we are having a Java icon. So how do you do that? We are going to declare an image icon. So I'll say image icon, I'll call this logo, new image icon. And in here, I'm gonna pass the path to a certain image we have in our project. All right, so if I come at my project structure here, you can see that I'm having a folder called images. And in that folder, I have the my underscore logo that PNG image. So that's the image I'm going to use as the logo. So I will say forward slash images, because that's the name of the folder that's containing the logo forward slash my underscore logo that PNG. So now if we want to change the icon of our frame, we will simply say frame that set icon image. And inside the brackets here, we will say logo that get image. So this is going to get the image out of the image icon here. All right. Now when I run, you can now see that we don't have the Java logo anymore, but it's the image. It's an emoji image that we have as our frames logo. Okay, so that was it. One, what other thing that we can do is to actually change the background color of our frame. How do you change the background color of a frame? Normally for other GUI components, we directly use the set background color, but with the frame that will not work. Let's try it. Let's say frame that set background and then my bad, I'll say here, I'll say color that red, for example, when I run, okay, let me import the color class. If I run this, you see nothing is happening. The color red is not showing. So this is because we need to use a method, a particular method called get content pane to make sure that we are getting the content pane of the frame. So we will say here from that get content pane, open and close the brackets, that set background color. So this is gonna make sure that the color that we are changing is gonna be that of the content pane. And for your information, the content pane is actually the inner area, you know, below the title bar and inside our frames border. So now you can see having a red color as we defined it here in our set background method. So when it comes to colors, we can actually use RGB instead of using, you know, default color names like this. So we can use RGB color code. So how do you do that? Inside the brackets here, I will simply say new color. And then in here, I can specify the color. So now this is an, an RGB color code. When I run, you can see we are having a different color. All right. If I change a little bit the code, you know, this is a different color. Apart from the RGB, we can also use, use an hexadecimal color code here. So that will be like this, use a zero X, and then you can put in the color code like this. Now, if I run there, you can see a different color on the screen. With a the frame, there's also a concept of layout manager. So the layout manager is actually a Java GUI class that determines how the various components that you will add on your frame will be aligned and positioned. So we will talk about layout managers in other videos, but just for your information, how do you set a layout manager is by using a particular method called set layout. So I would say frame that set layout and then inside the, br the brackets, you can now define your layout manager. For example, you can say flow layout like this and then import the layout manager that you want to use. So there are actually various layout managers, like about eight of them. You can actually set the layout manager to null, actually, if you don't want to use predefined layout managers uh, provided by Java, you can set it to null and then manually add objects or GUI components to your frame by defining yourself the alignment, their coordinates, and then their dimensions. All right, so that's it. 
We can also, instead of specifying the size of the frame like this, okay, we can use a particular method that's called pack method that will make sure that your frame will adjust its size based on the components placed in it. All right. So let's say that we don't have as the size here. We have not defined the size. We also have not set the layout to null. And for your information, the frame by default has a layout manager of border layout. All right. So let's say now that for this particular frame, we are applying the pack method like this. And then let me run. So now you can see how it's showing because we have not added anything in the frame. This is how it's shown. Let's say that we want to add maybe a button. So we will say J button, BTN, new J button. And then we say button one, or this is a button. Let's import J button class like this. So for the button to show, we have to add it. So we will say frame that add, BTN. So this is how you add a GUI component to the frame. So when we run, you can see now that the button is showing and the size of our frame is actually resizing itself according to the item added in it. Let's say that we set the layout manager of our frame to flow layout, something like that. We say flow layout. Okay. And then we add another button and we call this BTN2. Okay, we change some text a little bit. We add the second button to the frame as well and then run. So now you see the size of the frame is adapting to the size of the buttons that we have added on. All right, so this is actually how the pack method we have here works. And also note that this pack method must be placed at the end like this. After all your methods, let's say that we place it somewhere here at the top. Okay. And then when we run, you see, we are not able to actually see the content of, of the frame, right? This is because we placed it at the top here. So this is something we need to know. So let's put it back at the end like this. All right. So that was the first way that you can create a frame. So we have done it directly in our main method and we've declared a frame instance with a JFrame class and all of that. So the second way to make an application create a frame or a window, a graphical user interface window, is to create another class that will contain the application program by extending the class JFrame. So this way of doing uses the mechanism of inheritance. That means that the, another class we, that we will create will inherit the functions and methods of the Java JFrame class. I have that second class that I created here called my frame. And what we're going to do is that we're going to say that this my frame is going to extend. That means to inherit from JFrame. So I need to import JFrame like this. So the instances of this class, my frame, are definitely going to be frames because it's inheriting from the JFrame. So now the my frame class is going to be able to use the variables and the methods of the JFrame class. So when using the inheritance mechanism, we need to add another method apart from the main method, which will allow us to create the frame object. So that method is called a constructor. And the name of the constructor is always the same as the name of the class. So in here, in my the my frame class, I'm going to add a constructor. So I'm going to say public my frame. So now we are having our constructor. So now because this my frame class is a subclass of the class JFrame, it's inheriting from the class JFrame, then it can now access all the public methods of JFrame. So that means that, for example, if we want to create a frame and set the title of the frame, all we have to do is to say this, that set size, and then we specify the dimensions of the frame like this. So it's going to inherit all the properties. All right. So let's say with this second method, if we want to create a frame, we want to make a frame visible, what should we do? So let's come back to our main class here. We're going to remove all of this like this. So let's say we are having this my frame class, which is extending the J frame. And then we want to create a frame. What should we do? So first of all, we need to declare the various attributes of 
our frame. So I'll simply copy and paste in the constructor the code we already wrote in the main in the main class. And what I'm going to change here, I will not need this one. I'm simply going to change frame to this. So I'm going to say this everywhere. All right. So here as well, this, 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 and then the last one will be this. Okay. So why are we saying this here? So we know that all these methods are method contained in the JFrame class. So this here is making reference to the MyFrame class. And we know that the MyFrame class is in everything from the JFrame class. So any instance of the MyFrame class is going to be a frame. Okay. If we run, nothing will happen because we still need to tell our main method here that we want to create an instance of type my frame. So we will say my frame at frame, we instantiate that by saying new my frame. Okay, so now our program will definitely know that um, this is a my frame class. This is a class that we have here. And in that class, it is inheriting the properties of the JFrame and we have defined all the attributes and all the methods and all of that. So now when we run, you will see that our frame will appear in, in the screen. Okay, so let's see if I comment this. If I didn't write that and when I run, you know, nothing is shown because we need to actually create an instance of the MyFrame class. So here we have find all the properties, you know, all the methods. And now in the main method, we have to create an instance. And as you know, in Java, the main method is actually the, the method that executes your code. That's the entry point of your program. So here we are telling our program, okay, I want you to create an instance of the MyFrame class. And what the program is going to do, okay, MyFrame, what class is it? It's going to come here in this class and it's going to do, okay, you are inheriting from JFrame. Yes, I get it. And then, okay, so an instance of this class is going to be a frame. I get it. And okay, you say that the title must be frame title, this relative, resizable, icon image, content, set background, and all of that. Okay, I'm okay with that. And then I'm going to return this frame to you based on what you define in the my frame class. So guys, that was it on the frame, how to create a frame, how to make your Java program create a graphical user interface window or frame, and how to define the various attributes of your frame, like you change its background color, set the title, uh, its position, and the layout manager, and all of the other attributes. I hope this video was informative, and please don't forget to like, to share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.